We read in the scripture where Peter uh, had been toiling all night with the others and they were trying to catch fish and they caught nothing. Then That morning Jesus said to them, have you caught anything? They said, no, we haven't caught anything. And he said, launch back out. And they went finally after a period of time. Peter said, okay, I'll go back out. Went back out, and Jesus said, cast the net on the right side of the ship. And they enclosed a, a ton of fish. And uh, so when they came back into land with all the fish, uh, Peter fell down and and about begged Jesus to depart from him. He says, I'm a sinful man, O Lord, depart from me. And... Uh, the other, the other side of that is that Jesus Christ is going to say, depart from me one day. Here we see Peter saying to Jesus, he's a sinful man, depart from me. So we have a generation today that's saying to Jesus, depart from me, leave me alone. What side are you going to be on, friend? Are you going to be one like Peter that is so full of sin that in the presence of God you're going to say, "Get away from me, leave me alone i'm 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 filthy i'm I'm a sinful man. See Jesus said to Peter, Don't be afraid, fear not from this point on you're going to catch men. I'm going to make you a fisher of man, Peter. Now listen, folks. This is a generation that's crying out, even in, as it was when Jesus was, before he was crucified, they cried out, away with him. That's what this generation is saying, away with the true Jesus, away with the true gospel, away with the gospel that convicts of sin and immorality. That's what this generation's saying. They're rejecting the true Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the true Jesus Christ. The Jesus that said, sin no more. That's what they're doing. They're rejecting him. And, but there's coming a time that we read in Matthew chapter 7, Beginning with verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Now, Jesus goes on to say, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man. Jesus is bringing a contrast between those that do and those that don't do what he says. The wise man is the one that does what Jesus says, obeys what Jesus says, and the foolish man disobeys what Jesus says and doesn't listen. And Jesus said, those that don't listen, he's going to say, depart from me. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now notice the question they're asking Jesus. They're saying, did not we do many wonderful works in your name? Did you know even Masons today, even the Masons think they're doing wonderful works? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they think they're doing wonderful things. Oh, look at Bill Gates. He thinks he's doing wonderful things, trying to save people's lives and making vaccines and spending billions of dollars on all the things, all his charities and his foundation, doing wonderful things. But that's heathen. We're talking about those that think they're believers in Christ. Bill Gates doesn't think he's saved. 
He doesn't even, he's a heathen. I mean, he's a atheist. He's not even Catholic as far as a religious Catholic person. Um, but we're talk. Jesus is talking about people that thought they were saved. They thought they were saved. They thought they were going to go to heaven. How many people today that really, truly believe they're going to heaven? They really believe that. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Why are, they, why, is, why are they saying Lord more than once? He's not listening. He doesn't hear them. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Did you notice Jesus never answers their question? He doesn't know them. He doesn't hear them. But he does pronounce judgment on them. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers, you that work iniquity. So here you got a contrast. You have Peter, Simon Peter crying out, Depart from me, O Lord, I'm a sinful man. You have those that cry out, Away with him. What should we do with your king, the king of the Jews? Away with him. But then you have the other side, where Jesus is saying, Depart from me. You cursed to everlasting fire. What side are you going to be on? You're going to be on the side that says, Depart from me, O Lord. I'm a sinful man. Or are you going to be on the other side where Jesus is saying, Depart from me. You would be better off on the side like Simon Peter saying, Depart from me, O Lord. I'm a sinful man and acknowledging you're a sinful man. But even in that, God was merciful to Simon Peter because you don't tell Jesus to depart from you. But God knew his heart. The Lord knew what Simon Peter was going through. And, and the Lord will work with us individually on an individual basis. He knows our heart. He knows where we're at. And the Lord knew that Simon Peter... In his foreknowledge, he knew that Simon Peter was going to serve him. But can you afford to go down the same road as Simon Peter, saying to the Lord, Depart from me, O Lord, I'm a sinful man? Because this generation today is crying out to the Lord, Get away from me, leave me alone. Because they're choosing their sin over him are you choosing your sin over Jesus are you choosing to be sinful instead of accepting Jesus obeying Jesus workers of iniquity can you imagine can you imagine people saying Lord, let us in. Then shall they stand without. Let us in. Let us in. Now, they're not interested in going to heaven right now, but when all hell breaks loose, it's going to get pretty bad on this earth, people. And the scripture says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Oh, yeah. When things get real bad down here, then they're going to begin knocking on the door. It won't be Jesus knocking on the door. It'll be them knocking on the door. They will be knocking on his door. Let us in. I often think about, I wonder how many fingernails were stuck in the boards outside of of the ark from digging into the side of the ark trying to get into the ark clawing at the side of that ark as the flood 
was coming upon them, holding their children up over their heads. As the water got higher and higher, can you see them out there screaming, Noah, let us in. Noah, let us in, especially after they watch supernaturally the door close on its own. They saw that door closing and the rain was coming down. God's judgment's coming down, people. God is going to pour out his wrath upon a third of the earth. A third of humanity will be destroyed. Oh, my. They're going to stand without and they're going to scream to the top of their lungs, Let us in, Lord. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. We don't want to be on either side of that, really. We don't want to be saying depart. We want to be humbling ourselves, right? Right? We want to be surrendering to his lordship, that he would be lord of our life. Surrender now, people, because time is running out. 